Welcome to Deep Learning. Today we'll be talking about the, the relationship between machine learning and data. Um, as we said previously, uh, this course talks about the kind of machine learning where um, that is really data driven. So data is really needed in order to train the system. Sometimes for fun we say that data is king because it really dictates the model and algorithm to use. In theory, both the model and the whole training system would come out of data. Right now we're not quite there yet. What we do is we usually create a model, so a neural network architecture, out of experience and uh, we train this neural network model with uh, some mathematical formulation um, or stochastic gradient descent based on um, a certain loss function or criterion which we also choose um, and based on these two then we use data to train the parameter of these models what should really happen but hasn't yet happened is that all of these three things come from data which is a little bit harder problem um, so the data should tell tell you what the model is what the loss function is uh, of course uh, based on some task that you you define or you help define and uh, the data is then used to to train the model but right now we're only the training parameters with the data and instead we are choosing both the model and the loss function ourselves um, part of which will will need to be addressed and corrected in in future research Data is though the one that decides the problem you can solve because if you are trying to solve, for example, um, a car, autonomous car driving problem where you want the car to follow the road, for example, and not bump into other things, but you only have data of um, driving in uh, sunny California, let's say, then when your car is going to be facing different conditions, like fog or snow, uh, where the street is not really well defined with, with snow, for example, then um, you won't be able to do, your model will not be able to do a good, good job. So if you really want to solve a problem, you really have to have data of all possible conditions where the problem arises. And uh, this is a little bit of heuristics as you have to decide what uh, data is, is needed um, and uh, there's a little bit of trial and error where you will um, collect some data and then you'll find out that uh, uh, some things don't go as expected, you're not able to solve the problem as you wish, and then you need to collect more data and so forth. So the problem really requires also the right data. Um, and uh, in general, for this kind of algorithms, uh, having more data is usually better than creating overly complex algorithm um, that sit on top of your neural network. So in this course we'll, we'll basically take a more purist approach where we only use neural network to solve the problem. But of course a neural network output is um, uh, it can be used together with other techniques and it's often used with other techniques, uh, shortcuts uh, but again, these shortcuts or techniques uh, usually are added by, by us engineers um, as a way to hand and uh, providing a solution to the problem. And we, sh we should not really do that. That's why in this course we take a more purist approach of keeping neural networks. What we, we really need to do is to have the, the problem solved directly from from the data and if we don't have the right data we should go and, and and find the right data and the data should be telling us about the model and and the loss function to use and then basically we'll have a very little human intervention which is, is really what we want to save ourselves from um, a tedious task and have more free time to en enjoy life or 
in our case, to think about solving new, new problems, more new and exciting problems. So also there are problems that we cannot solve because we don't have the data to solve them yet. Um, you know, it's been we made the example of uh, landing on Mars. Well, we don't we we don't really have a lot of videos from Mars. Now we do probably because there are some rovers. But let's say Pluto, send the probe to Pluto. We don't know what environment will be there. And there's other examples that are more similar. So, for example, understanding action in a video. Um, it's 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 complicated because uh, we don't have a good data set that shows all the all the possible action that humans can do. We have some data, uh, simple examples, but not all of them. Or even physics. Um, we could think of uh, creating a data set where we, sh we teach um, a machine, uh, the physics of our world, uh, momentum, uh, inertia, and uh, velocity, acceleration, gravity. But um, we only have bits and pieces of that right now. Because labeling data is costly, and this is the last item of this list, um, because it, it takes really a lot of human intervention to, to curate this data, and, um, and it's quite costly all the time. So what we, we need to do is really to um, create the supervised techniques. So here today we're going to talk a little bit about the data sets. So data sets are a collection of samples and possibly labels. In our case there will be lots of images put in a folder where the folder is the name of the categories. So a data set is usually composed as we said of a training data, a testing data and a validation data. Um, so usually training and validation the sets are used to, um, to, to create an, uh, a model while test data should, is used to both. So just uh, do a test on, on, on the results of what we train. So a tra uh, we usually take uh, a data set, you know, let's say we have a thousand images. We usually take uh, something like 800 images as the training data. We want a lot of, most of it to, to train our model. We keep aside 100 as a validation data where we, we use it to, uh, to, to change slightly the, the model parameters and, uh, and validate them again. Uh, but then we, we really don't, don't use very often uh, the testing data. The testing data is supposed to help us in the last step where we really want to test, okay, I have a solution, let me try it out. In general though, when you have a solution, you often have this testing data and it's hard really to make the distinction between validation data and testing data. Some, and In some places they try to do that, but there's always tricks that, that people use to, to go around it. Um, so in, in theory, you could um, you could do without um, validation data. I'll just have the training data and testing data, but that's not really the appropriate way to do it. In any case, each set is composed of data and labels. So let's talk about the training data. We'll have lots of images and labels. So let's have let's see an example here. So uh, a typical data set that um, you know it's very easy to, to use uh, to, to do prototyping on um, uh, machine learning and deep learning computer vision at first is the CIFAR 10 data set. This has 10 classes. Uh, some of the images you see here, airplane, a bird, the cars, cat, and so forth. The data are images. In the labels is just the class name. Um, we can have um, other data set that uh, don't, don't try to categorize the whole images one, but they do other things. So they can, they do categorization and localization. So they give you maybe a larger image and they ask you what's in this image. Um, what, what things are in this image. You may say, okay, there's a, there's a horse in this image, uh, but uh, it's, it doesn't 
cover you know the majority of the image so you probably want to localize it with a bounding box um, so this data set has images and it has a class name but it also has a bo bounding boxes and it's one example is the Pascal VOC um, there are other also uh, pixel wise uh, complete pixel wise uh, segmented images so like for example this data set that is called the cityscape cityscapes as um, um, images that are completely labeled every pixel you know most mostly which is uh, quite tedious to do um, in terms of labeling um, but you basically try to label uh, every item in the scene with its own class and you try to label pretty much all the classes that are there but this is very useful for training for example to, to recognize road, road scene where um, you're very mostly interested in obstacle and, and the street and uh, traffic signs uh, and in particular of obstacle you're very interested in finding people and cars and buildings so you don't bump into them uh, but you don't necessarily care um, what object it, it really is uh, you just want to avoid it really um, so here in this kind of images, um, you um, you create a mask on top of the image that labels every pixel. So then you you can take a chunk of the a little chunk of this image, and the center pixel says you know it's a tree. Then it means that um, that chunk of image has a tree in it, and you can use it to do uh, categorization uh, as. Um, as for the previous data set, the data here are images, labels is at each pixel, is labeled as a class name. So you have a mask that is as big as the original image. Uh, similarly, there are also uh, 3D data set like the Sun RGBD data set, which is, was built with a camera and a Kinect. Um, so depth camera. So the, the images are, um, the data is images plus depth images. And the labels are class of objects. Uh, plus, you know, they are um, pixel-wise uh, segmented as well. So, this is like a very rich, rich data set. Um, in order to train uh, sequences or so recurrent neural network um, sequence learning, then you could have. Uh, a, data, a data set of sequences, for example, text is a sequence, right? Or a current neural network. Data is text, and the label is the same text because you're trying to predict the next word or the next set of words. Um, and uh, RNA learns to produce text similar to the training data. Um, you have some links here uh, that are quite interesting. Well, uh, there is going to be uh, specific lecture on recurrent neural network and data set and we'll mention this again. Uh, there's also uh, image captioning data set like uh, MS Coco where you have data set which, uh, which give you uh, an image and the label is the text caption that describes the whole image. Um, and you could use RNN for example to learn to produce text or you could uh, do multi-class categorization as well. Um, um, there is also um, another data set like the UCF 101 data set is an action recognition data set so the data is actually a small video and the label is an action and there are some some action that have been been labeled um, in, a, in a certain set of video this obviously requires more work because uh, we have to go through sift through videos and uh, and cut examples of a specific action um, it's uh, it's quite more uh, more difficult to do than than just the sorting images in a folder. So more techniques are needed to uh, automate this process. Um, and this is all in terms of uh, data set explanation. I hope this gives you a good overview of what's out there. Um, I also recommend you that um, if you are interested in a specific data set, you Google for it. And you often find many other data set, cats versus dog, medical images, and, and so forth. <laughs>